seasons of love. Sone Tramble is a purpose-driven entrepreneur, author, and marketing strategist who specializes in helping people to move from where they are to where they always knew that they could be. Welcome, Sone Tramble. And we're back with one of my favorite new friends, Sone Tramble. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks How for having me, Rashida. I'm good. How are you? Really, really good. So Sone is an author. And, she, and what other things are you involved in? Because you have many hats. Author and entrepreneur and goal coaching is the latest thing I've been sort of pushed into. I also have developed a, a goal planner for women to help them sort of identify their goals and push them into achieving those goals. Entrepreneurship as well and goal coaching. Awesome. I need the goal planner because after the day I've had today, a planner would have helped me. Uh, a little bit, oh, well. <laughs> but but yeah, I you know I a lot of people are wondering, you know, we're all at home, we don't know what's coming up next in the world, especially with this pandemic and whatnot, and they might be finding a little difficult to set goals or set realistic goals in light of not knowing what's next. Do you have some pointers you might want to share about how they can navigate this season of change and still achieve goals that um, can help move them to the next level in their careers or personal you know, endeavors? Mm -hmm. Sure. So I think that it's always important to stay focused on the goal. Mm -hmm. And not so much what's going on around you. Those are what I consider to be distractions. Mm -hmm. So if we stay focused on the main goal and the steps that we create to achieve that goal, we get closer to that goal. Um, we are consistently taking steps that we set out, you know, to take us forward mm -hmm. in, in reaching the end goal. And so as long as we're taking those micro steps, mm -hmm. we reach that bigger picture. Can you say a little bit about what those micro steps look like? So, yeah, I know it's easier said than done, but how do you break down goal achievement into measurable objectives that you can check off and say, did that, did that, mm -hmm. and, and then have a sense of accomplishment? So basically, first, it's really important to get very clear about what your main goal is. Sure. And from that goal, you can identify smaller action steps that you can take that are more realistic, more achievable, because a lot of times we see the big picture and that's what we want. We want it right now. Mm -hmm. And so it's more important to identify that bigger picture, but yet know that there are smaller pictures up under that. So it's sort of like multi-level. So at the top, there is this main goal that we want. Right. And at the bottom are the are our starting points. And so we start at the bottom, you know, little steps, little things that we can do that will propel us forward to reach the top. And so the process of starting at the bottom gets us to that bigger picture at the top. Awesome. And, you know, I think um, so let's let's take something as an example. I have a goal to what do I need to do? OK, I want to lose five pounds. I also like pound cake. Walk me through uh, achieving my, my process for goal achievement and in, in, in the action steps that would um, I would need to employ in order to, to reach that goal. Because I think, you know, everybody, unless you're really, really fit or, you know, that's not, you know, your thing. Everybody, the main thing is I want to lose weight. I want to mm -hmm. lose weight. But we mm -hmm. all find ourselves in like this cycle of wanting to lose weight, not losing the weight, beating yourself up and then saying I need to now lose more weight. Right. So how do we break those negative cycles in order to actually move forward? And you can give us uh, some distinct steps for that. So I think it would be important to create a structure that works for you, not based on what someone else is doing or what has worked for someone else. So for you, it may be that, you know, you might be able to start off drinking more water mm -hmm. as opposed to cutting out an entire meal. Sure. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then so then going into maybe your meal portion sizes, instead of cutting out what you like altogether, maybe you'll say, I'll eat a little bit less mm -hmm. until you can get, you know, more comfortable in eating less, drinking more water and then doing it. On, on a lower level helps you to do it more mm -hmm. each every time you know you go to that dinner plate mm -hmm. you're gonna have in your mind okay I, I did this already you know I ate a little bit less I'll eat a little bit more or less and then now you can move into possibly eating more healthy so instead of just taking a, a plate of 
spinach and trying to eat that when you don't typically eat spinach, Mm -hmm. eat your pasta and eat a little bit of spinach Mm -hmm. and then try to, you know, transition into just eating spinach altogether without the pasta. So but it's important for you to create your action steps. Right. And then can you say a little bit about accountability structures, too, because I think that's important. Now, I heard you say achieving goals isn't just about cutting back or not doing a thing. It's about adding the right actions to it as Mm -hmm. well. But what if you're the type of person that needs somebody to to light the fire under you? It's like, okay, this is what you said you was going to do. Where are you at? So that's where I would come into play. (laughs) You know, you would call me like, hey, I'm not doing so well. I'm struggling with my diet. And then, you know, you would have that person that will continuously push you. You can do this. And you don't have to think that you can do it all in one day or all in one week. You have to set a timeline that works for you. Sure. Because at the end of the day, you can achieve whatever goal is you want to, as long as you're focused on the goal and 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 taking the action steps that are required to get there. You have to do something every day. Mm -hmm. You can't just have it in your head. I want to lose weight. You have to do something. The action is more important than the goal. Absolutely. So you have to just continuously work toward reaching that goal. Sure. So, so Nate, thank you so much for joining us today. I want you to tell the people how they can find you, how they can connect with you and the products and resources that you have available. And then I want you to look into the camera and leave one lasting um, thought with our friends, our family, our Seasons of Love family about um, your maybe hopes and wishes for them in the days to come. Okay. So in regards to the Gold Planner, it can be found on Instagram at Gold Girl underscore planner. That's G-O-A-L-G-I-R-L underscore planner, P-L-A-N-N-E-R. And all of the books, the kids' books and the Gold Girl Planner as well can be found at turnipseedinternational.com. It's T-U-R-N-I-P-S-E-E-D-I-N-T-L.com. And so there is a quote that I like, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Mm -hmm. And that's what's important is taking those action steps toward achieving that higher goal. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us today, Sone. And I hope that you enjoyed this motivational moment. We'll be back after these messages. Bye. I'm Victoria Reese, born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. And I am the proud brand owner of The Oil and the Juice. We're currently an apparel and empowerment brand. Once allowed to safely and conveniently gather together again, it'll become a coffee house slash event venue. The oil and the juice, I had the concept for having the oil and having the juice growing up. I knew that I fit within the church, but I also was comfortable, so to speak, in the world. And sacred and religious settings or circles If a person is appealing or gifted or just cunning with their craft, they're known to have the oil. In secular settings and circles, when a person is appealing or charismatic, if you will, they're said to have the juice. So I found comfort in kind of my place in business and in the kingdom knowing that I had both. I was born and raised in a church where evangelism was was huge. I think it's important to minister to the people around you and within the church walls, but I think that the people and those groups that are outside those four walls, like that's who we're supposed to be reaching. I have a heart for people who are underrepresented, who have been counted out, who don't have access to the same resources or to the same principles or who are brought up differently and who may not relate to all the carrying on that we do in the church, but those souls still matter too. Like their lives still matter too. We're supposed to be reaching them and pouring into them. And so it's on us to go out there and get them. So that's kind of my move, that's my goal do both. We can be found at theoilandthejuice.com. We're also on Instagram at sign theoilandthejuice. We're also on Facebook at theoilandthejuice. So we're all over. Oh, to please
your faith behind to rule Faith comes back here The word And hearing by the word Of God For we are saved through faith And saved by his grace If we only just believe Oh, with faith We walk by faith and not by sight According to your faith Be it unto you Be it unto you According to your faith Be it unto you Yeah, be it unto you Your faith be it unto you. Whatever you need from the Lord, be it unto you. Whatever you can stand in need of, according to your faith, He's able to heal and deliver. But it's unto your faith, yeah. According to your faith, according to your faith. Sarah Bosley, gospel recording artist, has a sound that is rich with nuance and depth. She inspires many to go deeper in their love of God and people with her power-packed delivery and vocal prowess. Welcome now, Sarah Bosley. Wasn't Sarah Bosley amazing? Oh my gosh, I know you're clapping and worshiping the Lord right where you are and you felt his presence. And we have her here today. Sarah, how amazing are you? Oh my goodness. I don't know. You can be <laughs> humble. You can be humble. You, be, uh, you, you ain't got to be humble, but you be can humble. be humble. The U.M., right. The UM. But we so were blessed by your ministry. Yeah. And over the years, I watched you grow and blossom. We've mm-hmm. done a lot of ministry together. Mm-hmm. And um, just seeing you come into your own is mm-hmm. so amazing. It's so mm-hmm. encouraging to me. Yeah. Because you are a jazz gospel singer like some people say that they get a jazz gospel singer but honey you got the goods on both ends well praise that <laughs> and i'm so i'm so proud of you so tell us a little bit about who you are who you are as an artist um yeah or whatever else you want to share i'm going to ask you more questions okay i'm gonna ask some deep probing questions like i'm oprah and oh I my. need you to, and I need you to answer like, like you're Gail, like, like I'm Gail, yeah, like you're Gail, right? Oh my We're gonna God. have a Gail moment, right? Oh my God. <laughs> okay. So okay. Let me but get yeah, ready. So who, who is, who is Sarah? What got you into music and writing and all of that? What got me into music? Well, I come from a musical family. Okay. Um, I, my dad sang, my mother, she sings and you know, just my whole family sang and, um, just growing up around music, you know, my brother prays the worship leader, just everybody singing. So, um, I was singing in, you know, church choirs and praise and worship teams. And then I realized that I, I, 
people wanted me to sing alone. <laughs> you, so, got, you, got alone. You, got, you got your oil. You got some oil too. Praise God. Praise yeah. God. Thank God for the oil. Oil in a voice. Hey. Some people got oil, no voice. Oh, some people got, got voice, voice and no oil. oil. Oh, Lord. But you got the both, best praise. of both worlds. Yes, yes. Got to keep it that way. Praise God. But but just growing up in the church and singing and then um, started writing, you know, like in my early, um, you know, early 20s started writing just life stuff and I just started writing and stuff. So yeah, it's just been all of my life. I've been around music and church. Yep. Yeah. And so you are my, we're not label mates, but we are production sisters. Yes. Right? Yes. We absolutely. share the same producer yeah. on a lot of our work. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and shout out to Gabriel Carter. He's Woo! one of the best producers in the land. Um, in the musicians. land. He's such a nice, super, super sweet. Yeah. I guess I can't call him a kid no more, even though I've known him since he was a little kid. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and so about your, your songs, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I can hear Gabe all over that. Yeah. That's yeah. his signature. Yeah. Um, how was it creating these two songs? And is this on an upcoming project that's coming out soon? Yeah. Or is it just a single? Well, so In Jesus' Name is a single. Um, Faith is from the Sunshine EP. Okay. Um, so, um, uh, so what happened was with Faith, um, it, I wrote Faith like in like 2000. I wrote Faith in 2000. And it was just been in my spirit. It's just mm -hmm. been in my spirit. And I was like, we need to do something with it. And um, Gabe Carter, he just, he heard it and he just started putting things to it. And he just, he just kicked then it came from there. Yeah. Just kicked it there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's what it. Is. And so, what's next for you? What's happening? What's next, what next for me? It's it's you know I'm excited. I'm I'm I just believe it's um believe it's some broad stuff. I believe it's more music. I believe it's more ministry. Um and just just being productive in that. A lot of a lot of more music to come. A lot of more music to come. So mm -hmm. I got to ask you this question because you know we're living in a new a new normal, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, at least for me, I haven't been performing anywhere really. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe I had one gig this year, mm -hmm. but okay. So come through gig. <laughs> Listen, the first person I heard reference a gig was Vicky Winans, you know, because I don't know if you were there at the time when we mm -hmm. were singing background for her. Okay. And um, she referenced what we were doing. She's like, you know, we got another gig. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, what was a gig right. economy? I mean, right, exactly. Right, so, right, um, right, right. So I don't necessarily think of it as a negative term. Right. Because I don't want to, but because I, I definitely do not believe in cheapening ministry. And what exactly. you do absolutely is ministry. Absolutely. So, um, I didn't mean that as for disrespect, right. but ministry engagements, because many churches are not open physically, right. you know, opening their doors and they're doing virtual mm -hmm. events. Mm -hmm. How are you re reinventing yourself as an artist, uh, a performing artist in this new climate of virtual everything just about? Um, just re in, in, in staying moving, um, just being uh, inventive. Um, you know, this is inventive. What you're doing here is very inventive. Um, so just, I mean, praying and asking God, what's the next step? You know, it's some different things that God put in my spirit to do. Um, I'm just basically in prayer, you know, the Lord, what you want me to do, how you want me to do, how you want me to navigate in this season here, because, um, you know, cause the, the message and the gospel still has to get out and just by seeking him and asking him what avenue that he wants to, um, you know, how he wants to express that, you know, just seeking him. He's giving me some ideas. So I'm excited. It's going to be some stuff. I'm going to be doing awesome. so. Amen. So tell people how they can find you, connect with you, follow you. Well, I am on all digital app platforms, you know, Spotify, Apple Music, all that wonderful stuff. And I am on Facebook and Instagram. At? At um, Facebook, I'm Sarah Bosley. And Instagram, I'm Bosley Sarah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you for your time here today, Sarah. You were amazing. You thank are you. amazing. Thank I love you. your spirit. And girl, you better come through with the African prayer. Hey. Hey. Right? Hey. No, I'm <laughs> Why? Maybe ratchet. Why? Why well, we're, we're not ratchet. Right. We're, we're not, not ratchet. Obviously, we're not. Right. Yeah. But we are slightly sexy for Jesus. That's what yes. we, that's, that's the term. Holy we came sexy. Up with. We're just joking. Don't Holy write me a letter. Sexy. Do not write me a letter. Period. Why? But I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> You know, there is a space for women of God to look beautiful mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. and you absolutely look beautiful. Thank you represent you. Christ well. Thank and you. Um, I'm so proud of you. I look thank forward you. to what's coming. Thank you. Your new next. Thank you. Thank All you. All right. Everybody, Sarah Bosley. Thank you. I it's like I'm here. I am more than, than Satan is under my feet, and God is giving me just like the layman, oh, laying daily.
Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. 